In this module, we will discuss the electrical grid, the electrical substation, the layouts of the substation, and the main components of a substation. In the early days of electricity, energy systems were small and localized. Initial systems were used to power small factories, offices, and even hotels. Soon, many similar self-contained isolated systems were built across the United States. The Pearl Street Station, launched in 1882 in New York City, uh, possibly was the, among the first of these systems to power a few hundred street lamps in a neighborhood using 100 volt generator that burned coal to power. From late 1800s onward, a patchwork of AC and DC grids cropped up across North America. By the 1930s, regulated electric utilities became well established, providing all three major aspects of electricity, power plant, transmission lines, and distribution. In an electrical grid, consumers are divided into three groups, residential, commercial, industrial. These groups are all powered by the grid according to their needs. Using substation components and transmission lines, a power grid delivers stabilized line voltage and frequency within certain given limits. In simple terms, this is normally done by measuring these values and then adjusting either the generating gear to the load or by redirecting or switching the power to balance the load fluctuations and interruptions. Beside this, the electrical grid must ensure the safety of people and equipment by raising an alarm and or shutting down a plant if a dangerous scenario arises. To achieve these goals, the electrical grid relies on many systems that assist in management, such as control systems, protection systems, energy management systems, alarm systems, and distribution systems. Delivering reliable power across the electrical network requires a self-healing grid that uses advanced analytics, communications, and controls. Control centers utilize the power of digitized substation and advanced communication systems to remotely monitor and control electrical grid. At the center of the electrical grid is the electrical substations. As you can see in the layout, there is a transmission and a distribution substations, which are connected to the main generations, either a traditional generation, an energy storage, or a renewable generation. And at the other end of the substations, you can see the customers, which are the commercial, residential, and industrials. In order to control these substations remotely, the energy management system, distribution management system, and energy providers rely heavily on the communication infrastructure that's available that's mimicking the electricity delivery from the generation to the load point. Uh, without this good communication system layout, the energy management systems and the distribution management systems will not be able to remotely control these substations and would require a lot of, a lot of manual work. In this section, we'll discuss what's an electrical substation. Building a substation goes through all the phases of a substation. As you can see in the diagram, um, first is uh, there is a load growth in the area where the substation is required. Once the load growth is identified, then we have to go and find out what is the source of energy. The source of energy, of course, depends on the area. If you have hydro, then you can use the hydro source. If you have a wind, you will use a wind source. If you have neither, then you might need to go to a nuclear source. In either case, once the, the source of energy is identified and the layouts of the substations is identified, it starts our design and construction phase. In the design and construction phase, the, the layout is finalized. Uh, all the construction uh, related uh, testing is done and we start building the substation. During the building of the substations, many sub-projects take place, and the final project is the commissioning project before the substation comes to life. Once you do the commissioning, the substation is ready to, be, uh, to come into the grid and be energized. So 
the substation begins its energization phase and now it's under upgrade and expansion throughout its life and this could be the longest uh, phase of the life of a substation where the substation just keeps getting expanded and upgraded expanded and upgraded up to the point where it reaches to the point where we have to take a decision to, to commission the site or make the site part of a bigger site uh, whatever the decision might be and of course a, a newer uh, it, it, it's normally decommissioned because it cannot serve the load in the area or the load have disappeared altogether so there is no need for the substation itself so we start the cycle one more time in any case the the construction and design requirements that which includes the location consideration site preparation layout of equipment bus work insulation grounding safety systems and security there is many criteria for deciding the components and type of a substation uh, first, we will go with indoor substation versus an outdoor substation, an underground substation, pole mounted substations, and then we've got the voltage levels, uh, whether it is an air insulated system versus a gas insulated system, AIS versus GIS basically, and uh, at the end, whether we're going to, if it is a GIS, whether we're going to utilize the GIS on all components of the substations, uh, the SF6 gas or not. So to show you this uh, typical AIS substation layout uh, from left to right, let's consider that the left is the primary side and the right is the secondary side. In the primary side, you can see the primary power lines, the ground wire, the overhead lines, the transformer for uh, measuring uh, of voltages, disconnect switches, circuit breakers. This is on the primary side. On the secondary side, you will see uh, so basically connected to the secondary power lines you will see the current transformers the main transformer the control building and the secondary power lines the main components of a substation basically are contained within the switchyard so you've got the current transformers the voltage transformer the surge arresters the um, voltage regulators uh, circuit breakers uh, all of these components are within the switchyard. The switchyard can be insulated either with air or with gas, so it can be either an air insulated system or a gas insulated system. Um, only 2% of the substations uh, in the U.S. Um, are, are uh, built with a gas insulated system. That's because of, for economical reasons, for cost, right? It's, it's, it's uh, more expensive to uh, to uh, buy and install a gas insulated uh, system where all the components are within uh, enclosures and the enclosures are uh, material is improving and uh, depends the enclosures could be sitting inside um, uh, a building uh, where where it just stays in its uh, aluminum state or it could be sitting outside in the in the outside so the enclosure or sometimes it's painted for painted for ease ease of maintenance in the enclosure the gas that's insulating uh, all the all the all the materials uh, is sf6 which uh, basically prevents the arcing when uh, all the equipment uh, well that where the incoming and the outgoing um, uh, bus is uh, sitting in close proximity and no no arcing would take place uh, as a result of having that SF6 gas as an insulation medium. The substation layout uh, sometimes uh, basically dis displayed in a in a single line diagram. So this is how and one example where we take a substation uh, layout and we try to translate it into a single line diagram. Um, the translation of, to a single line diagram, there isn't a, a set standard uh, that's worldwide agreed on all the symbols to be used, uh, the colors of the symbols. There is a few uh, standards here and there uh, that would define the coloring of these symbols and how the symbols should look like, but uh, different uh, regions would use different symbols and different coloring scheme. 
and um, on the HMI there is an HMI normally in the substation uh, sometimes the, there isn't an HMI in the substation but it's it sits remotely in the control center that uh, where basically the operator or the engineer can visualize this single line diagram of the substation and then visualize the status of all the main components of the substation um, so you can see the isolators the bus status and um, <clears throat> some of the animations would be uh, to to change the color of the circuit breaker from red to green or black to 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 white uh, to to um, uh, indicate that the, the breaker has been tripped or is in a, in a, in a, uh, in a closed status or, or open status. So uh, in, in a substation, uh, the main step of figuring out the layout and then translating that layout during the design time into a single line uh, diagram just like this one uh, assist us in uh, understanding uh, the overall layout of the substation and the status of the main components of the substation. Now that we understand uh, how to translate the substation layout into a single line diagram, we will utilize the single line diagrams in order to understand the different layouts of substation, the different possible layouts of the substation. Now different layouts of the substation differ based on the requirements for that substation and uh, the philosophy of the utility uh, all, all play uh, a role into the layout of the substation what i'm going to display is the main layout of a substation the main uh, types that have been seen in a, in a substation environment but uh, there's probably way more uh, different examples of a layout of a substation this should give you uh, an overall idea of the what a substation could look like and it would give you an appreciation or an understanding of what uh, the substation um, engineers are talking about if they say uh, this is um, a, a, a single bus uh, substation or breaker breaker and a half substation um, hopefully by the end of this uh, section you will understand uh, the major layouts of uh, substations to categorize substations layout uh, basically we need to uh, focus on the main components the two main components is the bus and the breaker so as you can see it's a given that if you've got a breaker you've got all the components that go with a breaker grounding transformer cts vts um, all of that is is a given so we basically will take a look at the major uh, layouts as we said and uh, for every layout we will display only the major components which is the breaker and the buses a single bus system is a given that there is a single bus system we normally don't mention that there is a single breaker so we say this is a single bus system a uh, single bus system has uh, incoming feeder and outgoing feeders and basically this setup is the least cost and the least space requirement for your substation it doesn't have any redundancy um, a single failure will impact the entire system so that's the downside to it a single bus with a bus sectionalizer uh, as you can see it requires three more components so that requires uh, three more uh, an extra space to accommodate the three more components um, but it gives an extra option where if there is a failure on one section it doesn't impact the other section of the bus a double bus system with a bus coupler has three more components to uh, achieve the bus coupler at the same time for every incoming and outgoing there is an extra isolator and as you can see the two buses with the extra isolators and the bus coupler would require more cost and uh, would require an, uh, more space above the pre two previous examples that we have shown you so but it's more resilient to issues in the substation so uh, a failure would not cause the entire system to go down and each incoming and outgoing has the opportunity or the ability to go through a different route to pick up the power and continue the load without a loss of load to the end customers 
a double bus system with a double breaker, similar to the previous example that we were to just talking about. And, and the idea here is that on every incomer and outgoing, as you can see, there is uh, two breakers. And with these breakers comes all the extra um, devices that support the breaker. So um, it's more cost than a double bus with a single breaker of course way more cost than a single bus system and it requires twice the space uh, that a single uh, bus would require for sure and um, and more maintenance so uh, th this this uh, might be the the most expensive uh, layout as such engineers started to look for uh, to achieve the same layout but with less components as i said the main and transfer bus system is similar to the previous example the only difference is instead of putting two breakers we have a single breaker on every incoming and outgoing and in this case if the main fails then we would pick up from the transfer if the main comes back again then we would stop using uh, the transfer bus so this is achieving similar to the previous uh, double bus double breaker system except with less uh, components in a ring bus you basically uh, are trying to achieve two breakers two buses for every incomer and outgoing so you've got two routes for the load or the power to be uh, delivered through the substation and you've got two breakers uh, on every uh, incomer and outgoing with the least amount of components if you compare it to the double bus double breaker and um, so it is less cost than a double plus double breaker and less space requirement than a double plus double breaker but uh, there is, um, of course, the, the, the issue of two sections failing at the same time, and that's causing a major uh, part of the ring uh, being outside of the load. The final layout that I will discuss with you is the breaker and a half. The breaker and a half, in a, in, as, as you can see, you've got three breakers for every two incomers and three breakers for every two outgoings. And the idea is that you can use two breakers for... Um, every incomer uh, or one breaker and another breaker that is used by both the, the, so it's as if you're splitting that extra third breaker in half so that's where the name comes from the breaker and a half um, it, it does again uh, uses less components than the double bus double breaker uh, and you can use this in a, in a single bus or in a double bus if required um, again there is downsides and upsides and it's it's a matter in all the layouts that we discussed it's a matter of cost and maintenance cost not just the, the capex not the capital expenditures but the operational expenditures both play a part on which layout is best for the substation and again it depends on the utility uh, philosophy it depends on the requirements of the substation how much is sensitive this substation and how much redundancy we want to achieve in the substation to keep the load up and running now that we have a good overview of the grid the substation and the substation layout we're going to take a look at the various components i will try to highlight a little bit about each component and uh, what's critical in these components of course there is um, uh, very in-depth discussions on each component that can take place but we're trying to achieve just an overview on each component its function and what to look for uh, in the substation in that component so the main components that we will try to discuss is the switch yard the breakers the insulators uh, the bushing the transformers and of course the cts or the uh, capacitive voltage transformers and uh, the disconnect switches the switch yard um, some people refer to a substation as switch yard and that sometimes it's interchangeable there is a subtle difference between a switch yard and a substation now the the the, the substation is a switch yard plus a transformer some people might disagree with me and say no a substation is a, just a switch yard and the transformer is part of the switch yard so 
from that perspective, the switch yard, uh, if if or switch gear, uh, we would consider that for our uh, discussion as uh, I, the the switch yard as a series of um, disconnect switches, breakers, uh, sensors that serve the task of taking the power from a primary and delivering it to uh, a secondary. Um, uh, power and uh, we have two types of switch yard as I mentioned earlier so we've got the gas insulated switch yard and the air insulated switch yard as you can see the gas insulated switch yard uh, basically has the aluminum uh, covering and uh, it might have its own little uh, control uh, panel that would control the entire uh, gas uh, information uh, uh, alarms inside the the gas insulated uh, switch gear uh, the air insulated uh, switch yard of course is using air as a medium for uh, for insulation and that means that a lot of space has to be kept between um, uh, the components to avoid arcing the gas insulated system of course it uh, has its advantages because it comes in uh, pre-built uh, compartments and that means it's optimized and it has a compact design this pre-built uh, compartments minimize the civil work so that's a first advantage the second advantage is that it is has enhanced control and monitoring capabilities um, so the ethernet can be built into these compartments which mean less wiring at the substation for uh, substation automation achievement. Um, it has an excellent interruption properties, uh, so it can extinguish any uh, utilizing both the arc and uh, me uh, mechanisms for uh, energy. Um, it can break the fault, uh, very high load. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's much, from that perspective, it's considered to be much more reliable for interruption of uh, faults. We're going to display a quick uh, video about um, how the GIS work.
Circuit breaker has the ability to be operated under huge current uh, safely uh, to connect and disconnect uh, parts of the power system. The circuit breakers can be uh, can be um, classified based on many criteria. For example, it can be classified based on voltage level. So you can have low, high, medium, extra high, ultra high uh, voltage level uh, circuit breaker. It can also be uh, classified based on insulation, so it can be external or internal, uh, indoor or outdoor. Um, and an external design circuit breaker basically is the life tank and the dead tank. And the difference between the life tank and the dead tank, the life tank is you're keeping the circuit breaker at this connection inside the bushing uh, at the lifeline uh, voltage, uh, the incoming or the outgoing. Yet uh, in a dead tank, it is uh, it's made inside the the disconnection is made inside a container, which allows us to add a CT. Of course, uh, a, a live tank is uh, cheaper and occupies less space than uh, a dead tank um, uh, circuit breaker. Um, uh, also, another criteria that we can classify the the uh, circuit breaker is based on interrupting media. Uh, so basically we can say this is an air insulated, oil insulated, or vacuum or SF6 insulation, depending on the requirement and the philosophy of the utility. A circuit breaker main function is to improve power system reliability and the grid resiliency to handle faults. and. Uh, Basically, these uh, circuit breakers are uh, operating using a spring mechanism um, uh, that, uh, and sometimes they're integrated in a hydromechanical um, operating mechanism. Um, the circuit breakers improve uh, by improving the product reliability, uh, reducing the cost of a circuit breaker, uh, minimize the maintenance requirement of a circuit breaker, um, the counts that a circuit breaker can be uh, operated. So uh, all of these criteria would assist us in picking up the proper circuit breaker for our utility. So if we want to understand uh, a circuit breaker key features and benefits, uh, this is an example of a circuit breaker, a GE circuit breaker. And in this case, this is a dead tank circuit breaker. Like I mentioned, it would occupy less space. Uh, so it's a, it's a reduced footprint. And the reason being, it's uh, the current transformer is equipped in the bushing insulators to allow for reduced space and foundation required for installation. Also, it has a compact design and construction. Uh, so it has an advanced arc extinguishing technology, which significantly reduces the product side and improves reliability. It has an excellent seismic performance and pollution resistance capability. Um, like, like we said, it, uh, that tank is well suited for areas with frequent earthquakes, high elevation or severe pollution. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the most important thing is that it's a maintenance-free design. So this modular spring-operated mechanism and integrated uh, hydromechanical -me operating mechanism improve the product reliability, reduce the cost, and minimize the maintenance. Um, digitized primary equipment uh, by replacing labor-intensive individually terminated copper wires with standardized uh, physical interfaces and open communication protocols, example the IEC 61850. And uh, when, you, when we combine the 61850, uh, that means that it is easier to integrate into a, a control system. So this is where substation automation start to improve uh, the 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 installation and ease the installation of uh, the primary equipment like a circuit breaker. Uh, this XDGE Life Tank uh, circuit breaker 
um, has uh, superior interrupting capabilities. Uh, it is designed to handle demanding switching duties such as clearing short line faults and out of phase switching operations and magnetized current switching applications. Uh, no restrike or reignition occurs during the interruption of uh, charging currents. Also, it has a reliable performance. Uh, the characteristics of the SF6 gas uh, provides the live tank circuit breaker and associated components with a highly reliable insulating capability. The live tank breaker are designed with a leakage rate of less than 0.5% uh, per year, which of course uh, reduces the maintenance and cost of maintenance. Uh, the live tank breaker have been engineered to minimize the inspection and maintenance requirement. Uh, they are designed with a spring uh, operating mechanism to further reduce the maintenance cost and lower the overall cost of ownership. A couple of examples of a high voltage disconnect switch. Uh, basically flexible design configuration from 126 to 800 kV including both horizontal and vertical configuration center side double sided and uh, V breaker designs uh, designed for minimum but reliable clearance between phases and vertical length uh, conductive parts are constructed of lightweight strong aluminum alloy and driving parts are, and balance spring are enclosed to minimize environment exposure. Uh, they've got a hot dip uh, galvanized process on all exposed iron and steel parts, which provide an excellent anti-corrosion capability. Um, a height of uh, porcelain and uh, perpendicular uh, may be adjusted uh, via regulating bolts to ease insulation. Um, earthing switches are available at both ends of the frame. So just to give a couple of uh, special uh, features of uh, high voltage disconnect switches. In this case you can see the motor operating mechanism. You've got the motor, the fully enclosed uh, reducer, the secondary wiring board and the housing. And uh, as you can see, you can have uh, different types of it. So there is the, the vertical uh, setup and uh, there is the different types that it can come in. Uh, also, each one has different criteria when it comes to rated voltage, rated current, uh, short circuit uh, with a stand current, uh, rated peak with a stand current and uh, type of motor for the operation mechanism. Just to give you an example of a uh, voltage transformer CVT or CCVT, uh, the application in this case is from 72.5 kilovolts to 1100 kilovolts, uh, high accuracy 0 0.1 with wide margin, uh, optional accuracy adjustment terminal for on site configuration, uh, meets applicable IEC. IEEE and NC metering and protection standards, um, of course high seismic withstanding performance and extra creepage distance with strong uh, pollution resistance capability. Um, so of course when, when we talk about pollution there is a level D, level E uh, not prone for uh, ferro resonance uh, conditions improving uh, asset and system reliability. Um, there it, it comes in, in various sizes and uh, various uh, types. Uh, this is just an example so that you can identify uh, the voltage transformers and the different parts of uh, voltage transformers. We talked about uh, voltage transformer. This is an example of uh, current transformers. This is an oil uh, filled or an SF6 gas uh, current transformers. Uh, you can see the features that are listed, which means metallic expansion, storage tank, primary winding, porcelain insulators, uh, insulating oil, secondary windings, uh, brackets, tank, and the primary uh, terminals. Uh, all of these uh, basically allow us the, for the CTs to be more compact 
and uh, easier to install with a reduced cost and higher reliability. And this was a quick overview of uh, all the um, different uh, grid components, how the substation is located in the grid, different substations and the requirements for a substation in the grid and the main components of the substation. Uh, all of these components, as I said, are integrated into the substation automation system. And the substation automation system would grab the information from all of these components. Uh, if there is an alarm, it would report it to the control center and would allow the control center to do remote uh, controlling of the substation if there is any self-healing requirement that can take place inside the substation without any external intervention the substation automation would allow the substation to carry out this self-healing um, uh, property uh, of a substation uh, the, the substation intelligence is increasing with the substation automation uh, equipment being uh, faster operating and uh, uh, carrying a very compli complex logic to achieve a self-healing and a quick state uh, fault reduction uh, system. So hopefully uh, you have enjoyed uh, this SA 101 uh, overview. If you're taking this as part of a course, of course, you can uh, go ahead and do the testing online. Uh, otherwise, um, uh, thank you for joining us for SA 101 and hope to see you in SA 102 substation automation introduction.